Can you make a joyful noise to the Most High God this morning? Hallelujah. You are winning. I said you are winning. This is the fifth day. And the fifth day is a day of grace. The grace of God will see you through. It will not only see you through, it will cross you over. Amen. It will not only cross you over, it will deliver in your hand a victory. Amen. After these seven days of prayer and fasting, your next level will manifest. Amen. I said your next level will manifest Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Amen. thank you one more time for the privilege to be at your feet. Let your word go with power and authority to break the boundaries of hell. To pull down the walls of hindrances against your people's destiny and establish our, our path on a brighter light and brighter height this second half of the year in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Say a better amen as you take your seat. Please put your hands together and take your seat. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm sure you are having it good. Something beautiful is happening in your life. The Lord will perfect all that concerns you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Tonight, we are pulling down the walls of financial hardship. We are pulling down the walls of satanic devourers against our finances. And remember, we are following the example of Joshua with the wall of Jericho. When you understand order, scriptural order you never misfire and when you don't misfire your enemy will quickly give up on you and when your enemy give up on you your acreage of blessings will lie in wait for your possession everyone is changing level after now Amen. in the name of jesus christ now money is important to life the bible says money answereth all things money answered all things but when you lack money you are actually in a major major setback in every area of your life certain things can't be done until some kind of resources lands in your hand and that's why even though um, we don't worship money we don't love it but we must have it to use it we don't worship money we don't love it but we must have it to do what to use it Changes, positive changes in life is mandated by how much control you have over cash. Hallelujah. Positive changes, positive elevation in life is determined by how much control you have over cash. So um, everything good in life that came from God is being attacked by hell. Remember James chapter 1. Every good gift and every perfect gift come from the Father of light in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. So if money is good, then it is a gift from God. Just like every other thing, health is good, but the enemy can attack you with affliction. Marriage is good, but the devil can make it look as if you have made a mistake of your lifetime in marriage. So anything good, Satan must attack it. And that's why we must be able to pull down the agents of Satan that want to cause us to have financial hardship or suffer from agents of devourers. Now, so what does God, God's word say? What has scriptures got to say about your state of finances? If you understand what God has to say, it will help you to position your mind and your perspective on how to fight your battle, on how to set up yourself so you can access what god says available for you am i communicating with you praise the lord what does what does god have to say about money your finances number one by covenant you have a heritage of financial abundance by covenant by covenant and the covenant with believers began with our father abraham when god called him and he said I caught a covenant between you and me and your generation after you not only to be a God to you but to bless you and make you a blessing to the whole wide world. Praise God. Genesis chapter 
17 from verse 1 and 2. Praise God. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 8 at verse 18 now confirmed again what God said to Abraham at the beginning. He said in verse 18, and you shall what? Remember. You shall remember the Lord your God. You shall remember the Lord your God. Every time something goes wrong with finances, go back to memory lane. Go back and trace your genealogy. You are not a biological mistake that happened in a drought time. You are not an economic challenge that happened when Nigeria was down. Go back to memory lane. Know where you are coming from. It will help you to know how to reposition yourself for where you are going. You shall remember the Lord your God. For it is him who gives you power to get wealth. It is not the political order of the day that gives you power to get. It's not the governor of your state that gives you power to get. It's not your career or certificate that gives you power to. You shall remember it is the Lord your God. The reason why too many people are financially broke is because they look at where they shouldn't look at. They look for help where it can't be found. Now, if you cry to me, is it not what I have I will give you? Hallelujah. It's what I have I will give you. And unfortunately for you, if I don't have it, you're unfortunate, you will go back empty. So those who beg men don't know God. Those who beg men don't know God. You shall remember it is the Lord your God who gives you power. And if you are truly a child of God, you are not a hireling. If you are truly born of God and you are not just playing games in church, you have a father. Come and say, I have a father. I have a father. Uh, you need to build a relationship with your father, build confidence in him. He can't be watching you going down when he has control over everything. But the one you don't relate to on the day of your need can relate to you. Thank God for your pastor. Thank God he, he loves you so much, but he doesn't have everything. One man of God said God told him, because he's always pitting his members, always trying his best to take care of the members of his church. He said God told him, you are not El Shaddai. Don't take my place. If you want to behave like El Shaddai, you are telling yourself you shall die. And brothers and sisters, I shall not die. I shall not die for anybody. The one who needs to die has died. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God does not want me to love you enough to die for you. You don't need my death to make it happen in life. And so I refuse to die. That's why we are telling you how to make it happen. And if you refuse it, I shall not die. Praise God. He said, you are standing between me and my children. Allow me to deal with them. Allow me to make them go through the situation and circumstance of life till they find their place in the covenant and break through. He said, there are some of them that I'm dealing with by myself. Because they won't hear, they won't listen. So they have to be disciplined. Why did Jesus, why did God have to take Israel through 40 years in the wilderness? Because there are stubborn members, stubborn members of the family of God, of Israel, who left Egypt, but Egypt didn't leave them. They left Egypt, but Egypt didn't leave them. There are too many believers who claim they are born again, but their lifestyle is worse than a non-believer. I won't stand in the way of God when he's dealing with you. I'd rather be encouraging you to keep obeying God. I'll be encouraging you to keep obeying God. You know why God never fails a man? He never fails a man. He has never turned anybody back. Any mortal man can turn you back. Even Dan Gote may not be able to meet your need. But God never turns anybody. If you are truly sincere, you will change level this time around. Amen. If you are a true God seeker, favor must locate you. Hallelujah. 
I don't know everything about God, but the little I know, I know he's faithful. He said, my covenant will I not break. Neither will I alter anything that has come out of my mouth. For my faithfulness shall not fail. And my kindness towards my people shall not be withdrawn. Come on. This is God speaking. This is God speaking. Psalm 89, verse 33 and 34. My covenant will I not break. There's no mortal man who can tell you that. No mortal man, no matter how rich. Hallelujah. When God told that man of God that, he, he, he changed his approach. So instead of looking for how to dole money out to members, he began to tell them how to practice the covenant. Because God is not a magician. God is not a magician. He will take you through the steps. But too many people want to overtake others without taking instruction from the one who make it happen. You want to hit million in one day when you have never given one cowboy in your lifetime. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Hallelujah. So, by covenant, you have a heritage of financial abundance. The covenant is stronger than any circumstances around the world. The covenant is stronger than any, any economic situation, any industrial palaver, any political unrest. The covenant is stronger. The currency of heaven is never devalued. It is called covenant. The currency of heaven is ne can never be devalued. That is the meaning of covenant. So if you are truly a child of God, you are not just playing games inside church. You better stick to your God. And if there's any time to look for God now, it is now. It is now that the whole world is under tumor. There's no country you run to that they don't have problems. There's no country you run to that they don't have. If you listen to CNN, you will know America is under siege. So if that's where you are running to, you are just going to meet a better devil. Not the one you left in Africa. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number two, for time's sake. By redemption, you have a rich heritage through Jesus Christ. By redemption, you have a rich heritage through Jesus Christ. Now, if you, if you pay attention to the two points I've given, I have been pointing you a finger to God, not to your father, not to your earthly parents, not to your cousins or uncles, because they all have limitations. I'm pointing a finger to your source. When you know your source, you can never lack the flow of resources. When the flow of resources is not coming, it's because your source, you and your source are disconnected. And we can't have the glow of this light through these bulbs, even though they have capacity to glow. Yet, we must connect them to current. Until they are connected to the flow of current, they cannot glow. Every bulb in the market has power to glow, but they are watching out for current. The flow of your current is not from any kind of political party. That's why those who hit political party and they get out of it, they go dry. But the source of God never runs dry, day or night, 24-7. Hallelujah. And Abraham was rich. He was old and well stricken in age. And God had blessed him in everything. I've never seen a mortal man who had everything here. And you will never see one. But because Abraham held on to God, he had everything. He had everything. You won't miss your portion here. Amen. I said you will not miss your portion here. Amen. So it is time for us to wake up and stop playing games with our destiny. Did you hear me say that? Stop. I beg you, stop. Stop. You are not an errand boy. You are not a stooge to another man. You see, life is in faces. Correct. Men are in sizes. Correct. There are face of your life you need help yes but then brothers and sisters the best of your life is not attached to a man the best of your life is never attached to a man the best of your life is in the covenant the best of you is in the covenant thank god for those who can help you but brothers and sisters the almighty god is the best help of your life may you find him so by redemption, you have a rich heritage in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10 at verse 12. He said, for there is no distinction. 
there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Between the Jew and the Greek. Between the Yoruba and the Awusa. Between the Igbo and the Efik. Between the Ibiobio. Is he Ibiobio? <laughs> or Ibibio? <laughs> Praise God. Forgive me if you are from that side. Amen. No difference between the Bibio and the and the worry worry. We know the worry. <laughs> Praise God. God does not know the difference between you and you. Why? Because He's not looking at your your skin to determine who you are. He's looking at your spirit. That's what He gave you. Uh huh. And God made man in His own image. And in His likeness. What is the image of God? Who is God? God is a spirit. So God is the one who gave you the spirit. And any man under the sun has a spirit. That's the reflection of God in every mortal man. How does God look like? He looks like me. He looks like you. He looks like everybody here. So does God have many colors? Yes. The creator of all colors can't lack any. The creator of all colors can't lack any. So inside God is blue and black. Inside him is yellow and pink. Inside him is white and black. Huh? Inside him. If he can create it, that means he has it all. So now that source says he does not discriminate between the Jew, between the Greek, between whatever you came, wherever you come from, whether you are educated or you are not educated, whether you went to school or you never went to school, he does not discriminate in any. He said, but everyone who call upon him is rich unto all. He is rich unto all. So when the black man focuses on God, he reveals his riches to him. When the white man focuses on God, he reveals his riches to him. There are hidden riches in secret places, and the secret things belong to God. Those things which He revealed are for us. Hallelujah. The secret things belong to God. There is still some wealth in this town nobody has found. May He reveal it to you. The secret riches in hidden places, hidden riches in secret places. And the secret things belongs to God, but the things which he has revealed, the things we are enjoying today on planet Earth are those things which he has revealed. But for your information, there are still many more. Oh, as generation passes after generation, there are more revelations. Uh -huh. Facebook was ju is just about 16 years old. Not more than 16 years old. Facebook today is not more than 16 years old. And the discovery of Facebook has made somebody a billionaire. The secret things belong to God. But those things which he reveals, the things which he reveals, why do you want to settle for leftovers? I can't give you everything I have. I only dash you some. And for you, that's a leftover. Where you can have access to your own. Come and say, Lord, reveal it to me. Lord. Say it as if you mean it tonight. All right, by redemption, we have a rich heritage in Christ Jesus. He's rich unto all as call upon him. Look at this, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. These are the things I discovered some time ago, and I don't beg men. I lost the habit to beg men. I lost the nature to look poor. I lost the ability to, to, to look withdrawn. And make people pity me. I, I lose that. I, you don't need to pity me. I may be trekking, but don't pity me. Praise God. <laughs> I was talking to some of my, my leaders in church. I said, hear me, hear me. I'm not, I, I'm, not a, I'm not looking for your pity. I'm looking for helpers. Don't pity me. Don't pity me. Only help me if you are one of the agents of help. Don't pity me at all. You know why? It is challenges that fashion the best out of me. Don't pity me. So you never see me come to you that I need money to eat. I rather, I rather drink water and go to bed. And say, Father, thank you for making me fast today. But tomorrow, me and you are in this game together. Praise God. Because I know I have a father. I have a father who will never ever 
I have a father who will never ever fail me. Jesus is my father. He will never ever fail. Oh yeah, rock of ages. You have a father. Stop behaving like a vagabond. You have a father. You are not an orphan. You have a father. Your father is in heaven. He neither sleeps nor slumber. He is alert, alive. He is alert and alive 24 7. Watching over you, waiting for you to update your understanding so you can, it can upgrade your destiny. He's waiting for you to update your understanding. When you update your understanding, your, genuine, your work with God will be more genuine. When your work with him is genuine, he will upgrade your destiny. Hallelujah. And when God is ready to change your color, there is no enemy who can stop him. That's, that's the, the unfortunate thing about Satan is that when you are set for your own, no devil can unset you. But are you set? That's the big question. Now, number three, finally, before we stand up to pray. Money does not grow by prayers only. Because I know there are many prayer warriors here. You can pray, oh God, money, money, money. Let money come, money come, money come, money come, money, 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 money. Blood of Jesus. Why has it not come? Because money does not answer to prayers alone. Money answers to covenant practice. Money answers to covenant. So if you are a covenant practitioner and you now engage in prayers, every wall that is trying to separate you from the dividends of your covenant practice will be broken down. So if you have never in your life reached out to help someone with finance and you are praying for money, you are wasting your time. Instead of praying that God should give you money, the day somebody dash you 500 naira, look at 100 naira there and look for somebody to give. If you now part to someone with 100 naira, you cannot go before God. This 400 remaining is not enough. It's not enough to meet my need. So Lord, honor your word in my life. For your word say, give and it shall be given to me in good measure, pressed down. That is how to pray when money is concerned. If you are not a giver and you keep praying, I won't say the rest. <laughs> money does not grow by prayers alone, but by covenant practice. So until you engage in covenant investment, and that on a consistent, regular basis, consistent, regular basis. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. You can read it when you like. He said, he said, cast your bread upon the waters, and in not many days it will come back to you. He says, sow your seed in the morning, give it in the afternoon, give it in the evening. You don't know which one will speak on the day when you require an urgent answer. You don't know which one we speak because wherever a tree falls, that's where it will remain. Mm. When the when the cloud is when, when when the sky is full of cloud, they empty themselves upon the earth. So when nothing gathers in heaven, nothing comes down for you on the earth. That's why you just need to know the word of God, because all this one that will be complaining, you are complaining out of out of terrible ignorance. Nobody is the reason for where you are. Nobody. Every time you open scriptures, it opens your mind. And once your mind opens and shows you what to do, and you put yourself in line with what to do, forget the rest. And when the enemy seems to be rising his head, to, trying to sit on your resources, you blow the trumpet. You blow the trumpet. You blow, blow an alarm. Heaven will answer. Angels will go to work. And suddenly, resources will flow. Receive understanding. So engage in covenant investment on a consistent, regular basis. Then financial hardship will leave you alone. Your fasting and prayers is basically meant to illuminate you on the path to financial liberty. Your fasting and prayer, when it comes to money, it is to illuminate, to illuminate give you understanding. 
suddenly show you what to do to open up your finances. Isaiah 58. Now in verse 6, he said, this is the fast that break every yoke and destroy the force of wickedness. But in verse 8, look at it. In verse 8, he said, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your light, that means your illumination, your understanding. So when you are praying and fasting, that's why I keep telling people, make sure you don't keep your Bible closed. Because that time is very fertile for your spirit man to grab something from God. Don't keep your Bible closed when you are praying and fasting. Because something will occur to you that you never saw before. Your spirit man is awake. So insight can come easily to you. I get my best understanding of scripture in the atmosphere of fasting. Best understanding. Because my body is not weary of the spirit of carbohydrate and, uh, and, and red meat. My body is weak, but my spirit is awake. So when I look into the Bible, I see something beyond the letters that illuminates my mind and guides my steps on the right place to go, the right moves to make, the right pattern to follow. Am I communicating with you? So the essence, the, what, the best the best options in prayer and fasting is to illuminate you. Every time something is confusing, you go to a fast. And the greatest prayer you pray, Lord, show me what to do. Show me where to go. Show me the step to take. And the moment you get a scriptural guideline, you have found a sure banker. Scriptural guideline is a sure banker. It never fails. Hallelujah. Your light will break forth as the morning. And then verse 10. He said, if you will extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then your light shall dawn, in, shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noon day. Darkness will be like daylight. Praise God. So whatever has been hidden in the secret will suddenly be exposed to you. During fasting. Hallelujah. That's what God does. And then in verse 11, he said, during fasting, the Lord will now guide you continually and then satisfy your soul in the time of drought and strengthen your bones. And then you shall now live like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. If you have never experienced this, when you're fasting, you only went on hunger strike. It shows you a pathway out of drought. That's the, that's the response for you seeking the face of God in a fast. Praise God. Now number four. You're, you break the hardship when you avoid laziness, engage in intelligent work, maintain your integrity, and then commitment to investment is done regularly and when we say commitment to investment investment is in two levels the first and primary level is towards god the second is over the earth there are many investment opportunities on the earth but see the one on the earth are subject to ridicule they are subject to inflation they are subject to failing and many of you have engaged in so many investments that failed. But see, the security over the one on the earth is the one you did towards heaven. What many people don't know is that many unbelievers understood this trick. Many unbelievers understood this trick. So they give to pastors and give to churches. They don't go to church. But they know the, the security of their wealth. Is in the hand of God. Because just like you are exposed to the rain, they are also exposed to the rain. Just like you are exposed to devourer, they are also exposed to devourers. So money men can also lose money. But they understood that God is the one who, who can keep this money from disappearing suddenly. So they go and invest into the kingdom. I have understanding that Bill Gates sponsors missionaries. 
over 800 million dollars every year. That's the last I know. I don't know if they have ever stepped into any church. Hallelujah. Who is this man that is prominent in New York? Has prominent buildings in New York. Rockefeller. John Rockefeller has died, but he, 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 he singularly almost owned the whole of New York. Stinkingly rich. But one time in his life, his money was going down. He was going down. And the mother told him, have you paid your tithe? His money was not only going down, his health was also going down. And you know when a man loses heavy money, his health fails. High blood pressure catches him. Everything in his body, the organs refuse to function. And he gave instruction. Even if I would die, take this, take this money, take that money, take that money, give it to charity. Give it to those who need help. And then my tithe, take it to church. Pay my tithe for me. His health sprang up. God opened his eyes to see other dimensions to make money. If you have ever been to New York, almost every high rise, or you know what they call high rise, tall, tall buildings, belongs to his foundation. And they write the name there. Now he has died a long time ago, but that was his mystery. And anything you hear, Outside there, don't pay tithe. God doesn't need tithe. It's Old Testament. They want to turn you to Old Testament. You better know the God you are serving before they move you out of range of God's reach. There's no work in this world that can satisfy and keep your finances intact without God. And the first principle is bring your tithe to the storehouse. Bring your tithe so I can rebuke devourer for your sake. God is the one who rebukes devourer, not you. Is it not the one you know that we chase? What about the one you don't know? There is nothing that is Old Testament in Scripture. It is new revelations and insight. Jesus didn't come to cancel any law. He came to fulfill it. Fulfilling it means he came to confirm it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Anything he wants amended, he says it in the New Testament, but not the issue of tithe. He never amended it. Uh, people read where they like and emphasize what they like. But the whole truth is what will make you free. Receive understanding. So engage in your, your tightings, your givings, your, your, and other fiscal investment. Don't eat all you have, no matter how small. Don't eat all you have, no matter how small. You eat all, you eat tomorrow with today. Those who eat all today, they hunger tomorrow. Don't say because your stomach is big, you will eat according to the size of your stomach. Eat according to the size of your pocket, not your stomach. Did you hear me say that? Eat according to the size of your pocket, not the size of your stomach. I remember one time we were going through some challenges in Sierra Leone, and uh, we lost the money, and we were, we were hiding and, uh, uh, in one little house, one small room where somebody helped us to keep us from sleeping outside. Penny the time we have enough resources to go and rent a place. And then we didn't have money. So when we have engagements in places, in churches, in, all, in, in uh, programs outside, we trek. We trek most of the journey. Man, I have trek in this life. That trek, even though I trek it. Did you hear what I'm saying? I have trek to a point that trekking knows I trek. There's no shame in trekking. Just advance. If you can't run, hmm? walk. You can't walk, crawl. By all means, keep moving. Don't sit down one spot and be weeping and wailing. Keep moving. If you can't fly, run. You can't run. Walk. You can't walk. Crawl. By all means, keep moving. As slow as a snail is, it will still reach its destination. There's nobody who stays on one spot that gets to anywhere. Did you hear me say that? So we were trekking everywhere. We were carrying bags of books. 
on my shoulder. When shoulder is paining me, I put it on my head with suit. Free time. If I enter, they know the sign of my foot. On the sands of the soil of that city. Why? We didn't have money. And I'm not going to beg anybody. We'll go and preach somewhere and they will, they will thank you to even give you water to drink. You have to ask. Praise God. How do you get blessed in a place when they don't learn how to give? If you don't have connection with God, you will just die of hunger. One night I woke up, my stomach was paining me because of hunger. I took the bottle of anointing oil, Goya. I drank all. I said, Lord, solidify this in my stomach or else bring food. For two other days, I didn't need food. I have so much and you don't know what this guy has gone through. So if I have money today, you better watch your nose. Praise God. We will still be looking after those who have a need. One day I went to preach somewhere and I told them, anybody who doesn't have transport fear to go home after service, see me. Because the whole of money in Bank of Free Town City alone cannot equate to what I control. And I trek, I trek to the place. Why was I saying that? To make the devil mad. That you can cause me to trek now, but there's money in my future. And this trekking will take me there. We finish walking and preaching. We are going back to our house. We are tired. And where we live was on top of a hill. So and when you are trekking on top of a hill, you have to bend. <laughs> and be taking one step after another like that. As we are going. We have some small money in our pocket. All right. My, my, my assistant says, sir, look at that orange. You know, they arrange orange, that orange like pyramid. <laughs> He said the orange and is by bread. He was proverbially telling me, oh, can't we even buy orange? <laughs> but you see, I have calculated what we have and know where we are going tomorrow. It's a longer distance. So we may need to take transport to reach somewhere. If we buy orange today, we will trek longer tomorrow. So I replied him, the oranges are good. In fact, the person who peeled them did a good job. <laughs> he said, yes, sir. So, so I said, let's keep going. <laughs> we are going. He said, sir, you are wicked. <laughs> oh, I can't forget. He said, sir, <laughs> you are wicked. Suppose somebody faints here. I said, there's an anointing to raise the dead. So don't query me with the faint. There's an anointing to raise the dead. So if you faint, I just pour water on your head, you will get up. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Don't be ashamed of where you are, but refuse to stay there. In that same country, by the time our wives came to join us, my wife said, She's the one who said it. Missionary life, good though. Because we were in a palatia house. Condition have changed without borrowing or begging, without asking headquarters to send help. Condition changed. It's just for a time in your destiny there is money. So don't get yourself scared about the now. In your tomorrow, there is money there. So fight your battle and win it, and then get into your own. When it comes, it stays forever. Glory to God. That same time, we had a a, a toilet that I put fridge. Do they put fridge in toilet? Yes, to shame the devil. I put fridge, small fridge inside toilet. I put canned coke and canned minerals inside. So when you are poo-pooing, just take a canned coke and... <laughs> One day I sat on the, on, the, on the toilet, some seat, opened it, and I took a canned coke. I opened it, Shah! I said, Satan, can you hear? Satan, can you hear that? So I poured it inside the bath. I poured it. I said, Satan, can you see yourself? You are a mess. You made me trek in this same town. You will suffer long. In that same town, somebody gave us 505 metallic color red. Dash. That we can be to play around. 
You don't know something. Those who know God don't beg men. It may look as if it's far away, but man is closer than you think. And I see God intervening for you. This second half of the year is your escape route into your wealth. I say it's your escape route into your wealth. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. But see, don't shy away from what is expected of you to do. Don't shy away. It may look tough. Yes, that's how great men are made. They are made out of tough environments. Mm -hmm. Don't be lazy. Engage in work. Finally, financial devourers are subdued when your financial obedience is fulfilled. You want to subdue devourers? You fulfill your own part. God will fulfill his own part. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that is not to serve against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in readiness to revenge all disobediences when your own obedience is fulfilled. Praise God. Your touch pays tight to higher graces. I pay my wife pays tight. My children pays tight. So you are under an umbrella that maintains financial covenant. You cannot afford to be dry in this place. So there's a grace in the house to expose you to your own financial heritage. There's a grace in the house. So when it looks as if the virus are coming, we now know what to do. We wire him in prayers. Wire him with the word of God. And command the flow of resources to come. And they always come. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ for forgiveness for any financial disobediences. Have mercy on me and redeem my finances. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord have mercy Everywhere I have offended you Through My financial disobedience Disobedience in paying tithes Disobedience in engaging in givings Disobedience in honoring the kingdom of God Disobedience in consuming Every money I have Lord I'm sorry Forgive me Forgive me Forgive me for my financial disobedience. Have mercy on me and redeem my finances. Redeem my finances. Redeem my finances. Forgive me, Lord, and redeem my finances. In the mighty name of Jesus, don't allow devourers to visit my money. Don't allow devourers to visit my, my resources. Lord, forgive me for any level of disobedience financially. Forgive me for any level of disobedience financially. And through the blood of Jesus, blot out my sin, blot out my error, blot out my financial error, blot out my financial error in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are going to pray this one and pray it well. Say, Father, forgive me by the blood of Jesus of every wrong step of evading my tithe of engaging in wrong investments of practicing laziness of trying to cut corners I receive your forgiveness through the blood of Jesus now lift up your voice and pray forgive me Lord every wrong step of evading my tight of wrong investments of laziness of trying to cut corners have mercy on me Lord have mercy on me Lord in this second half of the year let your mercy prevail on me set me free from every anti-covenant practices set me free from every anti-covenant practices set me free from every anti-covenant practices whatever practice that can hinder my financial blessings set me free any practice that can hinder my financial blessings lord set me free 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Now we are going to fight. For everyone who have engaged in all manner of covenant practices, no devourer has a right to mess up your finances. Amen. So lift up your voice and say, Father, by the blood of Jesus, defend your covenant in my life as you rebuke devourers, rebuke losses, delay payments over my endeavors. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Defend your covenant in my life. Defend your covenant over my finances. You said I should give, I have given. I have not denied you my tithes. Rebuke devourers, oh God. Rebuke devourers over my finances. Every delay in the payment of my resources, every delay in the payment of the work I have discharged, Lord, let it be cancelled today. Defend your covenant over my finances. And release my resources. Release my money from those who refuse to pay me. Give them no rest. Those who sit on my resources. Give them no peace. Those who sit on my resources. By the blood of Jesus. Defend your covenant. And let every delay payment be released. Let every losses be shut down. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and finally pray and say, Lord, open the floodgates over my investments in the kingdom, all other investments on the earth, and command supernatural returns in overflow dimensions. The floodgate. Open it up, Lord, over my investments in the kingdom and the other investment on the earth. And command supernatural returns. Command supernatural returns in overflow dimensions. Lift up your voice and pray. Oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, open the floodgates of heaven. Open the floodgates of heaven over my investments in the kingdom, over my investment on the earth and command supernatural returns, supernatural returns, all the offerings, all the titans, all the, all, all the sacrifices, Lord command supernatural returns, I rebuke devourers, let there be supernatural returns in, in overflow dimension. The floodgate, oh God, open the floodgate, open the floodgate, and honor your word in my life, honor your word over my finances. Akimimim, brothers, open the floodgate, let my investment in the kingdom be not withheld, let my investment on the earth be not corrupted. Open the floodgate and command supernatural returns supernatural returns in overflow dimensions supernatural returns in overflow dimensions supernatural returns in overflow dimensions kemuli bugambra that msapunti braga this is the season the second half of the year must open up my finances the second half of the year my riches must show up in the mighty name of jesus atomi sebrando from pano sebraga akupe ketoji kaskelon bregado olimero sebariata thank you father in the mighty name of jesus we have prayed